define for us what is database reactivation? I think it's just an acronym that is, or a, a concept um, in our industry that we use that, I mean, is commonplace. But in other words, uh, database reactivation is basically just reaching out to your existing customers or past customers or even leads, right? So the importance of um, having a list or a community to reach out to is the crux of this one strategy, right? One of the main reasons and benefits of doing that and reaching out to your past customers or past leads is uh, they already have some form of know, like, and trust with you and your brand. So they're the lowest hanging fruit. Oftentimes, if you really unpack why we run ads or we do any type of marketing, it's to generate new business, right? So um, then that's one way to basically generate more income for your company is to um, run marketing and advertising campaigns. But then you think about the other end of that, right? Who are you running it to? If you're running it to existing customers and to new customers, then you may be overspending to get that message out to existing customers if you already have them in your contact or your database, right? So in other words, database reactivation is just, hey, with the contact information that you have for people that already have had interaction with your business, um, reach out to them first. Just use a different medium. And oftentimes the two mediums that we use for that are either going to be um, email or a text message slash SMS marketing, right? Okay, so that, that's great. Already, I'm I'm a little bit, I uh, kind of learned something. When I hear the term database reactivation, obviously, mm -hmm. there's two components. There's your database of old leads and sales. Mm -hmm. uh, and then reactivation implies you haven't really been touching out to them that much. You're going to hit them with like either a new offer, or a new sale, or just kind of touch base with them. Right. In my head, I always think that it's only your old customers that you reach out to, but it's actually your old leads that you haven't been following up with. But generally, like these are all people who've like put their hand up, said, I am interested in your service. I am in your target demo. I am in your audience. And then for whatever reason, you couldn't convert them six months ago, two years ago, or whatever the time distance is, 18 months ago, I guess. Uh, and, and that's how you kind of approach it. Yeah, I um, think... Depending upon the sales cycle, right? As you were saying too, um, sometimes it's it's not the right time or the right circumstance for that person that opted in and said, hey, I'm interested. It just may not be a now, right? It just might not be right now, right away. And that's one thing that you and I both understand, right? Like the reason why Google ads are so effective is because we're we're basically just focusing on the people that need that product or service right now. And oftentimes, if you think about the entire marketplace of people that um, are prime candidate for that market or for that um, product or service, that's 2% of the market. So what about the other 98% of people that are just not now? That's the mm -hmm. importance of reaching out to them because you already captured their information, right? Yeah, like I, I know this is super popular in like the, the fitness industry, among others. Mm -hmm. um, and it makes sense too, you know, like I always want to ditch the dad bod or get like something something abs in 30 days like that's always a thing but just thinking of my own kind of mentality there's certain times where i'm in that kind of algorithm myself where i'm i'm thinking about it and yeah i really need to oh yeah i you know like whatever my desired outcome is there's i go through cycles myself where this is more important to me or less important to me so just because i didn't buy a few months ago you're basically saying okay you didn't buy this but will you buy this and you're presenting them with kind of a, another solution to the same problem yeah so, absolutely fortune is in the follow-up right it's just checking in hey how are things have things changed do you still need are you still looking for what i have to offer right mm -hmm. all right so like as a as a business owner or, or even a marketing agency that wants to put this into other people's businesses what are some of the uh the benefits of using a dr campaign it's cheaper then acquiring a new customer because you're yeah. not running any ads. So this the effectively the cost of being able to broadcast your message is going to be significantly lower. The audience that you're sending this message to is going to be significantly warmer because to some degree, they've already had some exposure to your brand because they've raised their hand and said, yeah, I'm interested in the offer, right? That previous offer that you sent to them. Um, and it's just something to where you can actually control, right? You have some leverage in controlling uh, how much revenue or how much more new business you could pick up because you have an audience that is confined um, that you can reach out to. And if that offer doesn't work, then you at least get a faster feedback loop to say, hey, it may not be the audience that doesn't, that that isn't say attuned to it, but it might be the ad or the, I'm sorry, the offer itself. 
So if you know that it, this is your audience, right? And the offer isn't working, change the offer, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because they've already kind of pre-qualified themselves. Mm-hmm. And, and kind of one thing in my head, I always think DR, I think it's an SMS campaign. <laughs> but kind of what I'm hearing is it's also an email campaign. Yeah, absolutely. It's just another way. If you think about it just from the the the, the roots of just kind of like how the statement is is kind of defined, right? Database reactivation. Mm-hmm. So it's an existing database of what? What kind of information do you have um, off uh, based of how, what type of info do you have from your customer or past lead? And in some places, right, it's NAP, meaning mm-hmm. the acronym for name, address, phone number. What address? Is it mailing address? Is it email address? Is it, right? And then also phone number. Are you calling them or are you sending a text message or are you sending a voicemail? How many different ways can you reach out to that person? It's based and dependent upon um, what type of information you have to be able to contact that person on your database. So even, I mean, it's, it's interesting because we're both digital marketers, but direct mail isn't going anywhere. And I'm seeing a lot more digital marketers mm-hmm. sending direct mail. So it's just another way to get in front of your person, right? Yeah, it absolutely. It's, it's like whatever the herd is doing. I feel like a, a clever marketer is at least examining the opposite way, right? Yeah. People stop opening emails. All right, send them. Like people don't actually get mail anymore. So send them this. Mm-hmm. Um, so you, you touched on the fact that it's definitely much more inexpensive to just use the leads you've already paid for. Like, you know, there, there's definitely a a lot of people, customers included, will think that like you get your lead and it's a new lead for three to five days to, you know, 10 days. And then after that, oh, they're not interested and they just kind of push them to the back. Of course, they're still interested. This is a great way to get them back into your buying cycle. One of the things you've mentioned me before, though, uh, and, and we've kind of been through this a lot, like as an agency, one of the, the hardest hurdles that you have to get uh, get past is essentially uh, you've signed a customer, you've onboarded them, you really want to help their brand. But if you're doing like a paid ad, a paid ads campaign and it's like a lead generation campaign, no matter what you turn on, uh, it's going to take a few days for the leads to start coming in. Once the leads are coming in, they still have to book. After they book, they still have to pay. And if you're running an offer, oftentimes they don't make money on the first trip. They make it on the second trip. Mm-hmm. So DR kind of cuts into that because, you know, essentially you're lessening the time uh, from like they onboard with you till they get their first win, right? A customer needs a win to keep them interested. Can you kind of get into like, how that works and why DR is just perfect for getting customers quick wins. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, like if you are a performance-based agency, which a lot of, a lot of marketers are at least are, you know, kind of started with Mm -hmm. um, what essentially does your customer want that local business want, right? They want more money and how do they get more money? They need more people to sign up for their product or their service, buying their product, buying their services. Right. So if that's the case, what's more valuable, a lead or a referral or a, customer. Ultimately, a customer exchanged money for that product or service. So the closer that you can get um, these people to that transaction, the more valuable you are as a marketer, but then also for the business, the more valuable the relationship is with you and your local business, right? If, if, that's, the, the, mm-hmm. if that's your customer, that, that relationship is. So if you think about the, that, that's really where the value is because for anybody that is a performance-based marketer that runs ads for people that that generates leads for them, what's the most common or one of the most common objections that you get from a local business that has never run ads before, that isn't used to leads, they're used to referrals, or they're used to, you know, just foot yeah, traffic? These, these are bad leads. These are terrible leads. Right. Right. So if that's the case, right, then how can you offset that? Because you're not going to sit there. You may, you may have the time and they may have the wherewithal to be able to understand that they're newer to this game. Generating a lead is different than generating a referral or generating, say, repeat business. Right. Mm-hmm. But the closer you can get them to that pot of gold, which is more customers, more transactions, the more valuable your business is. Mm-hmm. So you're like automatically increasing their lifetime value of acquiring a new customer just because you have like a a more thought out system. You can add in certain pitfalls, like, you know, truly automated. So after their first cycle is done, you just decide to pick it up at any, any given point. And you just kind of work that lead more. There's nobody more likely to purchase from you than somebody who's already purchased. So like that's kind of built into it. And if I just think about myself, like say for, 
certain gyms I've, I've joined in the past or say a dentist or you know a, a lot of different businesses that can use this just because I'm not purchasing from them now you know doesn't mean that I am sick and tired of the organization you know what I right. mean like if I, if I had a gym pass at one place for a year and then you know I just basically said no nah, it's, it's not working for me right now that's because that's where my life was eight months ago but maybe right now if you hit me with the right offer out of the blue as I'm thinking oh you know I got to get ready for this vacation or my knees hurt or, you know, whatever the focus is, bang, I'm right back in there. And yeah, I know how to get there. It's going to be easy. I know how it works. So like the whole onboarding sequence is super easy for that business. And it, and it really just, yeah, it, it's the super fast, super effective way to actually get people in the door. Yeah. And oh. you just think about it from examples, right? Specifically your example of the gym. What about, I mean, if that gym ran an offer to you when you took your family to Japan for a month, would it, would it be, would it resonate? Would it be valuable to you? Of course not. Nope. But again, if you're doing something right, for example, where, you know, it required you to say, get in, get in shape again, right? Whether it's mm -hmm. new year's resolutions time, which we all know, right? Yeah, Those agree, resolutions yeah. tend to fizzle out by mid February, if not by March. So those types of campaigns make a lot of sense. It's almost like a win back campaign. But if you think about just reaching out, what different types of offers can you reach out for? Because some people that are listening to this may be in um, you know, a service-based business where it's like transactional, a higher ticket transaction like a realtor or a mortgage professional or a financial planner or an estate, estate um, and trust and uh, attorney, right? So well, they're not going to want, like, they, we don't always get our wheels updated every six months, or we don't always mm -hmm. buy a new house every year, or we don't always refinance our house every six months, whatever that is, right? So think about the different ways in which you just want to stay in contact with them so that you're top of mind, okay? It could be a birthday campaign. Hey, Kevin, just wanted to wish you a happy birthday from your team here at, you know, uh, ABC Real Estate right? Mm -hmm. uh, trust in estate um, type of attorney. What we could, what we used to be able to do in the past with Facebook, which I'm, I'm sure their filtering is a little bit different now, was um, if someone had a new life event, whether there was a baby, whether they're engaged, whether they got a new home, think about that as another way for you to touch base with them. Do you need to have a conversation to update your will and, and estate? Yeah, right? yeah, absolutely. If you're in insurance or something like that. 100%. And all it is, is like, it's something that should be done already. But then if you have this kind of in, in, a way to where you can automate that stuff, leveraging technology, having this in your system to where it automatically reaches out to them just to check in. But right? think about it. You're top of mind. You're reaching so, out for goodwill, right? Yeah. Like I, I'm actually hearing that DR can actually be part of like your, you can almost do it to existing customers that aren't even out of your buying cycle. Like in a way of say, they, that, that birthday campaign is just something that I wouldn't have done. I would have been longer and longer between my contact points with this person. But just like the the happy birthday, that's powerful, right? Because if nothing else, I almost feel like people don't even care that you said happy birthday, but they're impressed with the fact that you know it's their birthday. That's right. Right. But they don't care that you said it. But the fact that the business is, you know, like nobody cares if, if you know, Ad Ronin says happy Thanksgiving on our, you, you know, on our YouTube page or whatever. But what it does is it shows that we, you know, cross all the t's and dot all the i's like we've got everything covered by the time we have a birthday campaign that's up and, and generating and it is another way to kind of build that connection build that no like trust that's i never really thought about that that um, that's pretty interesting to me how about jewelry stores anniversary campaigns Jeez. right yeah, 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 yeah i mean you think about all the different ways and even with reputation right we understand that reviews are just basically no like and trust and there's oftentimes it's third party because you don't know the person that wrote that review, whether it was a glorifying positive review or a really nasty negative review, but those are important. So if you think mm -hmm. about it from that standpoint too, and from a customer experience, right? Not only are you taking proactive um, charge of say your reputation online, but a review campaign is going to be mm -hmm. something that is another database reactivation strategy or tactic. And another one on top of that is a referral campaign. We mm -hmm. know you like know, like, and trust us, but then does any of your friends and family need this or want that? And if you kind of take it down to more of like the frequently transactional type of businesses, higher volume, lower ticket, like restaurants or bars and things of that nature, think about all the times when you have like, say, the happy hour Tuesdays, where it's buy one appetizer, get the second one um, half off or vice versa, right? Or one beer. You don't ever go to a happy hour by yourself, get one appetizer and then just leave. So for the days and the nights in which your business is slow, why don't you just send out a broadcast, a database reactivation campaign? to your list to kind of to drum up more business for those days or nights that where you're where you're slow 
right? Yeah. Okay. So maybe I've just kind of limited myself in the past and reactivation to me just means like, okay, these people are out and they're not working, but we're kind of using it as just like working our database That's essentially. It. And it mm -hmm. works to, to call it reactivation really works at the beginning right? Like if you onboard a new client, but then after that, it's just a process that's going to continue. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the real takeaways that I'm taking there is that seasonality is kind of a big thing, Huge. you know, depending on the industry, depending on what it is. Um, yeah. You know what? Like if you get a text message, you know, over the holidays and somebody's just like, Hey, happy holidays. Thinking of you hope you guys do great. If it doesn't sound fake and you're not trying to sell, that's just one of those things that somebody will be like, Oh, yeah, these guys are pretty cool. I like that. On top, you know, I want to yeah. kind of chime in on that, right? So oftentimes when I have conversations with other business owners, right, that are in the service-based business, and I ask them, hey, are you reaching out to your past um, clients and customers, right? Are you doing any type of, say, database marketing, if you will? And oftentimes, if it's not a straight no, and the answer is like kind of like a mediocre yes, then I'll ask them, what are you sending to them? How are you staying on top of, how are you staying top of mind? And oftentimes, it's a very generic, glorified newsletter that their corporate is sending off that has no value to where it's just like, hey, I'm getting a rep in because uh, it's a touch that my coach or my team or my manager or my lead is suggesting that I do because I need to stay top of mind. Think about that. Take it a little bit further. If you were on the receiving end of that, are people opening that email? Is there any value in that? With all the busy things that are happening in their life, how could you stay a little bit? How could you do a little bit better than the competition and stand out? So if you think about it from that standpoint, it could literally be an email or a text message, whatever medium you have, like you want to use. Hey, Kevin, just checking in. How are things? Hmm. Start a conversation. Start a warm conversation. Be human. People don't do business with businesses. They do business with people. And if this person has already transacted with you before, and you're not a transactional type of person, you're a relationship type of person, and your business is more relational driven, relationship driven, then take that time and effort. And you can automate a lot of this stuff just to start the conversation. It doesn't have to be you physically doing this. You can if you want to, but with where we are in the world with technology now, you don't need to physically be doing that. You can have a system do that on your behalf to where with the people that do want to engage with, those are the ones you focus and you lean in on, right? This is cutting because like I'm, I'm looking at my daily schedule. I have 10 things on it and three mm -hmm. of them are reach out to this person, reach out to this person, reach out to this person. Like where I 100% not not quite database at that point it's almost like i have it a uh, campaign launched and i could reach out to them like two three days later just like hey how's it going but that could be automated and that is kind of you know a, a similar kind of method there i i want to say one other thing about that right oftentimes when people hear this in terms of automation uh the very first objection right or rebuttal is well it, it seems very bland and it's not personal i'm more personal right well, the whole reason why you want to integrate and utilize automation, right, with marketing systems, automation, even AI more and more in the mix now is to make sure that you free up your time from doing these manual tasks to be able to focus and give more of your focused attention in that relationship. If you have 100, say, people that you need to reach out to, are you going to physically take the time out to send all of these texts manually to see who is going to raise their hand and then engage with? Would you, wouldn't you rather have a system that does this on your behalf, knowing that you and your, like your company and your systems on your behalf are reaching out to these people and the people that do want to reach out to you at that time will, and those are the ones you focus on, right? Mm -hmm. Spend that time, make that phone call, but it's not going to be, to, it's not going to be a hundred text messages and a hundred physical phone calls. You don't have to do that. It doesn't make any sense. And you don't have the time for that, right? Yeah, I've tried doing that too. And when I do that, I basically cap out at like four to five clients that are that all keep me busy. Maybe an agency can can make ten to fifteen thousand dollars a month, but at a certain point you just kind of run out of that before automation really makes sense and and just different touch points and, and just being strategic about it. You know, like one of the things that I definitely see after years of doing this is I keep sending the same email. You know, like if I'm sending the same email to every client at the same point along the way, why wouldn't that be automated? Or after I haven't talked to them for a certain number of, of days or weeks or months, like, why wouldn't I just be like that? Hey, thinking of you, you know, or, or whatever, right? Like just to kind of get it in there. Obviously you want the face-to-face -face stuff and you want it to be really personal because honestly, we're in a, uh, you know, basically a personality driven industry, right? Like if people mm -hmm. vibe with you, 
they're going to stay with you. If they think they're getting value, they're going to stay with you. So DR is great for all of that stuff because it keeps those connections there. Uh, and it also gets you quick results, you know, for a, a great price because you've already paid for these people. Uh, one of the things that always kind of kept me from actually going all in on database reactivation is even though I've been in business for a long time, I don't really have a database. Like, mm -hmm. what does that what does that mean to you? Like, in what situation? Over the years, I've probably dealt with a hundred customers, mm -hmm. right? Whereas I've I've seen a lot of things where they're like, "Do you have five thousand people in your database?" So I don't even think that that applies, and I just kind of move on. What are what are like some of the things you should be looking for before going all in on this kind of strategy? Yeah, I mean, list building. If you don't have a database, then work on it, right? In terms of building it. So if we take that, if you kind of just, uh, you know, unpack that a little bit more, mm -hmm. what are some things that you can do to generate or build your list, right? As a digital marketer like us, if we're providing value, could we essentially turn some of these strategies into um, repurpose this content into, say, a playbook for someone, whether it's a video series or an ebook? We talked about this on the last call when it comes to content marketing, right? Why are we doing this? Why are we showcasing this? If there are some, if you have a client that um, you have some wins for, if you created a case study, uh, uh, you know, around those wins, whether it's a campaign or a system or something you integrated, and then you basically put that in front of other potential customers like that business, right? Mm -hmm. You're now you're giving yourself a, a mechanism to be able to share more value with other future potential customers right? in exchange for name, address, phone number, email address, mailing address, whatever it is right? For us as a marketer. So then you're building more value that way. And again, we understand this, right? It's no like and trust. There's fortune in the follow-up. So just because they opt into something now, doesn't mean they're going to become a, a customer right away. They may never become a customer, but unless we have opportunities out there to share more of what we're doing, uh, we're never building our audience. So, I mean, I'm, I'm also a, a culprit of that as well, right? Like, so for me, I'm looking at what different ways can I start to build my audience and leverage um, uh, a list building as well? Because we can always have, generate and build a bigger list because that's really where the fortune is, right? It's your community, right?